Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. We want to let you know that we have once again been honored with a nomination for the Hockey Podcast of the Year via the Sports Podcasting Awards. And all you need to do to help us is go to OurKidsPlayHockey.com and click on the Vote Now button. It asks you a couple questions. You're in and you're out, and you have voted for us for Hockey Podcast of the Year. I want to thank you all for being a wonderful, wonderful audience and helping us get to this stature of hockey podcasting because we've done it as a family, as the hockey friends and families around the world. Thanks so much and enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lee with Our Kids Play Hockey. Got a just great topic today. It's development without being destructive. And it's one of those hot topics where you might agree with a lot of what we say. You might not agree with a lot of what we say, but uh, we had a discussion based on just kind of coaching, parenting, uh, you know, how to push your kids, how hard it can be to push your kids, how maybe sometimes we do it too much in the sense of we give them everything they want and they end up not really building some of those skill sets for life that they need to move forward. Uh, and, and just to make this imp- this episode more impactful, uh, we brought back one of our favorite guests, J.B. Spizo. He is a culture expert, served a long time in the U.S. military, uh, incredible human being, uh, an incredible guest on the show. So you're going to really enjoy this one. Uh, we also want to let you know there's still time before the holidays. If you're watching this on debut week, um, head over to whenhockeystops.com. Get your pre-sale now of our new children's book, When Hockey Stops, which deals with uh, young kids going through adversity when they can't do the thing they love the most and how to overcome that adversity and find a way through uh, to be better. Christy and I had a blast writing this book. We really cannot wait to share this with the world. So check it out now, whenhockeystops.com. Uh, you get a $10 voucher to hockeywraparound.com. You get a really awesome trading card in one of those little plastic packages. It's legit. Uh, and some information about the book before the book uh, eventually ships. So great stocking stuffer for you and your family. But without further ado, enjoy this episode of Our Kids Play Hockey, dealing with development without being destructive. Hello, hockey friends and families around the world, and welcome to another edition of Our Kids Play Hockey. I'm Lee Elias, and I'm joined, as always, by Christy Cascia Burns and Mike Benelli. We have a very special guest today. First, second appearance of a guest ever, our culture expert, J.B. Spizo. Just as a quick reminder, J.B. has worked at the NHL level with several teams to build culture. He was a very high-ranking person in the U.S. military. We've talked about that in the previous show. Definitely watch the previous episode if you want the full bio. And JB, I'm not trying to skip over your bio, but we, we are short on time today and we have a very important topic. Um, and here's the deal, everybody listening. This is one of those episodes where all we have right now is a topic. We're going to discuss it, okay? And while we're all experts in our own right, this is one of those episodes where this conversation really does need to go beyond the episode. So if you're listening to this and you disagree, agree, or have thoughts on this, this is one of those ones where you should comment to us, you should email us, uh, you should give us your perspective because the only way we're going to move forward um, in hockey as parents and coaches is together, right? Um, and the conversation we're going to have today, you know, I'm going to start it with, with a statement. And this statement's either going to really piss you off at home or you're going to kind of go, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, I'll start with this and we'll go from here. The statement is this, every single team, every level, every organization under the NHL is a development league. Every single league under the NHL, this goes from Adams to Junior A to the AHL, is a development league. We have forgotten that completely in this society. And we are starting to do things that are taking away the development side of hockey. That's the first thing I'm going to say. The second thing I'm going to say, I'm going to throw it to this crew here, is there's this balance that's really hard. And it's hard for me. I'm telling you that as a parent, too. It's hard for me of we want to protect our kids. We don't want our kids to feel pain. I, everyone here agrees with that. All right. But you can inadvertently cause them immense pain later in life. If we don't allow them to learn the lessons they need to learn on a daily basis, which is how to fail, how to learn, how to make mistakes, right? You guys know where I'm going with this. So I'm going to throw this out to you guys right away who wants to start because again these two statements christy 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 cassia burns is jumping up and down for those of you listening christy go ahead all right so i think yes i'm seeing this i think the purpose of sports is getting lost a lot not so much on the kids but the parents they're forgetting what sports is all about it teaches our kids 
the fundamentals of life, like teamwork. It's about staying fit and active, teaching that early in life so they carry it on when they become old like me. Also, staying fit. Nobody um, thinks you're old, just so you know. yeah. All right. <laughs> I'm just ahead. feeling a little old today, so I just <laughs> threw that out there. Um, yeah, it's becoming lost on parents. What's going on here, everybody? Jump in. Yeah, I'm going to go because I know JB, he'll, his answer will be better than mine. I don't want to have to follow it up. So <laughs> I just I just think that, and I, and I want to preface this too by saying I don't think every league is is a development league in the, in the sense of, like at youth sports, it's not about, it's not always about development. Like in, in some teams I coach, I'm not trying to develop them for the next level. I'm trying to develop them just to be in the level they're in. Right. Just to, just to right. understand that, you know, being on time, like I have this, and, and, and most of the people in my family think I'm crazy because I, I aspire to the, the, you know, the 10 minute, you know, if you're supposed, if practice starts at three and you're there at two fifty, you're late. Like to me, you're late in my mind. Or if you just, you know, come to things late and leave early because you have another commitment. It's just this whole premise that we're teaching all these life lessons is not the kid's fault if they're not gaining them. It's us as parents. It's what we're doing in overscheduling them and putting them in situations where they can't win. They can't win because they have, they're, they're, they're children. Like they have to fight, they're fighting all these emotions and we're, we're impeding their development as human beings, I think, in so many ways. That's great. Yeah, I know. That's wonderful. Thank, thanks for having me. This is such a, uh, this, this group here, as far as um, hockey and sports knowledge and, and youth development, you know, I think what's happening is, is um, you know, there's a couple of things. I, Lee, I agree with you. Every league below the NHL is a development league. And there's even times that the NHL is development. Right, right, <laughs> right? You're, right. You continue to get better. And I think what we do at youth sports is we do a couple of things wrong. One, you know, we're already, we're, you know, we're already playing like systems and where we should be doing like individual development, right? We're not doing that development because we're playing system. And this team's really good because they're playing a system and parents are like, we should be playing this system. Well, like, they can't even get up and down the ice yet. Let's figure that out. Let's let the, let's let them do that. Um, so I was at uh, the, the rink here in, in in Vegas the other day, um, uh, w- watching watching a couple practices. And I, you know, me, I can't mind my own business because you know these pee wee parents were like talking about everything that should happen, and they need to run the umbrella power play and everything else. And I'm like. This is a Pee Wee B team. How about we just learn how to pass the puck in a little bit of puck possession? And these parents were like, it was, I, I was just, I turned around and I was like, this is not the focus, right? And they were like, what do you know about hockey? I'm like, I don't know anything, but I'm telling you, your, <laughs> your focus, your focus is, your focus is not correct. How about these kids ha- have a little bit of fun here? So I think what happens is we put all this internal pressure on and then we continue to second guess the coach and everything else. And, you know, we've said this all the time, the sport isn't a success, you know, it's the vehicle to success. And you know what? We say it all the time, Lee, Mike, we said it. Some of these young men and women will play this game professionally. And that's a wonderful thing. However, they will all be a professional at something. So why don't we work at helping develop that? Right. And it's funny, I love the peanut gallery. I would let, sit up there in the stands and listen to all the experts. You know, those power plays have to totally be changed. We've had seven power <laughs> plays and they haven't scored once. They're 12. Okay. Right. 12. No, but it's the, but it's the expectations. It's the expect, listen, my son, so I, I'm really fortunate that I get to I get a lot of NHL tickets and it's, you know, getting, you know, we get to get to go to the box seats and go to, you know, down below on the glass and getting the, you know, the locker room areas, which is all unbelievable. Thank you to those people in the NHL that allow so me to spoiled, you know, get those opportunities. Right. And I, and I am, <laughs> but my son more than anywhere else he wants to sit is in section 210 at the garden. He wants to sit with fans. He wants to set, but, the, but the mentality is, I mean, three seconds into a game, well, that's why we traded that guy. That's, that's he can't play. That's why. That's why we don't like him. Or oh, that guy stinks. He can't make a pass. How come they're not shooting there? How come they can't? Do, I go, guys. This is you're, you're you're three minutes into a game. I, you know, the season's over. I said just, but that's crept into our youth hockey culture, and yeah. it's crept into the ability to to people to lose 
we, I mean, I don't know how many times we use the word perspective on this, on this right. show that we've lost perspective of the virtues of getting to that end. And whether that end to JB's point is a stockbroker, an electrician, a sports psychologist, a hockey player, whatever it is, uh, you know, that end is all these little pieces that we put together going to it. And I think we've, we're, we're, we're almost like we're eliminating all these little steps to get right. to some end goal, which, yeah. which we don't, we're, which are not admitting that we're not going to get to the end goal if we don't reach these little steps. And, and Mike, I'm going to jump in here too, because I think one of the things, and this is something I preach with the teams and the businesses I work with. All right. Um, is that y- you have to have this understanding. There's multiple ways to define the word winning. All right. And here's the thing. Everybody wants to win. Like I've never met someone who doesn't, you know, really care. They, they all want it at some point, but what is the win? All right. And look, sometimes in a high school championship game, the win is to win the game. All right. That's, that's one moment. That's one moment. It's not the whole season. At the end of the day, it's not going to define you for the rest of your life. Right. And, and I'll give you an example. And, and this is a way this show and JBR conversations have actually helped me because look, I, and I want to, I'm totally willing to be vulnerable here. I feel this too. Even though we talk about this every week, when I'm on the bench with my son's might team, I still feel the yearning to want to win the game, even though it, I know it doesn't matter. I know it doesn't matter, right? So we're, we're on the bench yesterday and we're getting killed. Like, the team was off for a whole week, played a good uh, team and we're getting killed, All right? And I can see that the, you know, the kids, right? Because I'm trying to put myself on their perspective. They're having a really hard time. They, they know they're losing the game. They know they're getting outplayed and heads are starting to sink. I'm starting to hear the, kind of accountability go out the window, right? I'm not putting the blame on them for that. They're kids, right? But you can hear it, right? You're starting to blame each other. So I was feeling it too. I'm like, man, I don't like this feeling. And I started to kind of realize, look, they're going to go as the coaching staff goes. So I need to change something mentally here. I need to change the win, right? Because they're focused on winning the game when it doesn't matter. So I said to them, okay, next three players on offense and the defensive uh, player, who's going to win the hardest worker next shift? Right. First shift I did that was like, eh, yeah, whatever. Right. Second shift, there's like, I'm going to win. Third shift, they're all vying to win. I completely changed the perspective, the whole coaching staff, of what is the win of this game. And suddenly they played really well. All right. And again, didn't win the game. It didn't matter. But the second period, second half of the game, they played hard. They played well. Right. I changed the perspective. These are eight year olds. What happens at 15, 18, 12? When all we do is put the onus on winning, Mike, to go back to your point earlier, you know, one of the things I, I, that I'm going to have to try and do when my kids are older is how much am I putting on them that an adult couldn't handle, right? How much pressure do they have that an adult couldn't handle three hockey teams in one season? And if you don't do well, you're not going to get a college scholarship. Last thing I'm going to say before I throw this back, look, look, I have never been a fan of anyone saying you'll never make it to the NHL. Don't think about that. I have always hated that. If it's a kid's dream to go to the NHL, he has the right or she has the right to that dream. All right. I don't ever want to mess with anybody's right to have a dream. All right. Uh, I've even had NHL players say they're never going to make it. I, I just don't want to say that to a kid. All right. I, I don't think it does any good. You don't have to agree with the dream, but you have to agree with the right to have a dream. Cultivate the belief system behind the dream because it's going to teach them how to follow other things later in life. All right. It's hard. It's hard. You don't want your kids to feel pain. This is the next part I'm going to throw out to you guys, right? Where it's, it's, we're talking about failure, screaming at your kid on the ice, skate, 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 do this, do that. If you don't give them the pathways or let the coach give them the pathways to learn that on their own and fail, they will play in fear. They will play in fear of making a mistake. I am telling you as a coach, JB, Mike, and Christy, you can all comment on this. If you get a player gauging his play on fear of failure, well, I know that's an old school tactic. Not only will they fail on the ice, they will fail long-term in life. All right. They will fail and they might, they might go places, but they're going to be negative energy all the time, completely scared their whole life. Is that what we want for our kids guys? No. Plus, I mean, you're adding to their anxiety. I mean, life throws so many curveballs us at us as it is. I mean, you want to be supportive, you want to be nurturing. You don't want to add that kind of pressure. They can be mentally stressful as well. Um, so yeah, think about your words, your actions, take a step back and see, am I, am I really doing the best for my kid or am I right. doing what I think 
should be the best. Because you know you're I mean? not talking like, about being soft. I always want to make that that. Oh yeah, yeah, that, yeah You know, because yeah, yeah. yeah. we get that back while well, you talk about being soft. No, oh, it's nothing both. to do with that. Yeah, yeah. You, you can tell your kid point blank between the eyes what they did right and wrong. All right, right. all right, but but you can't. You, you want to be supportive. Right, right. You don't want to create a, a failure system where if they fail, they're gonna. Because here's the deal, guys. In life, I was just having this conversation. You're gonna fail. You're gonna fail. It's inevitable over and over and over again. Prepare your kids for that eventuality. I don't want my kid or anybody going in the world thinking, well, I am going to do this and I'm not going to fail. Successful people all fail and they know it. It's how they fail that makes them successful. I'm talking too much. Go for JB. <laughs> no, I just think that, you know, there's a, there's, there's a couple of things here. Why, why do we play team sports? We play team sports because it teaches us you know, the ability to be a good teammate and to work together. And then you take that to your next line of work and you, and you use that and, and, and people want to hire folks that have been on teams because they know selfless service, teamwork, work ethic, integrity, honesty. So I think those are the foundations. The other part, and I'll throw this to you, Mike. The other part is, is I feel that, um, so, you know, I noticed this, you know, being at, being at the, Rink here in Vegas, I noticed this, you know, obviously the Vegas Gold Knights have exploded, you know, they've, the youth hockey is going crazy here, which is a great thing, but I've noticed that I, this is just my, what I felt, I, I felt like the coaching's not keeping up, right, the coaching's not there because it, it, it's new, it's new, it's new coaches, a lot of these coaches didn't play growing up. They're not around it. They're not from, you, you know, the tri-state area where we, we all played, you know, we all played hockey. And so I feel that like they overcompensate then and they need, try to need to keep, you know, catch up. Oh, I'm, you know, I'm coaching the, you know, junior gold Knights or the junior silver Knights and this thing. And I'm just <laughs> like, okay, hang on a second here. Let's, um, you know, let's, let, let, let's, let's put the program together. Mike, I actually said to these parents, I'm like, you know, it's, it's all about small scale games. That's what the ADM model is about. And they were like, I don't understand. I'm like, make, I'm like making a play in a small space. I go get up and down the ice and make a play in a small space. That's the game. Right. And that's the NHL game. <laughs> and, and it, and it's, but it's this, you know, we don't understand. And Oh, by the way, why aren't Mike's using having a full ice yeah, practice? It doesn't look like the game they well, watch every day. That's why. It doesn't look like it doesn't look like a game watch. So not only, do, yeah. So the parent, the, the, the so I, you know, the education really needs to start with the parents and these coaches. And listen, a lot of these coaches are volunteering. I get it. It's their time. You know, they're working a full time job and they're coming in there. You know, trying to move ten year olds around the ice. Super. But that needs to continue to that development on that end needs to continue to develop. So that the kids. Yeah, and I think develop. that's why we love the, the the European models, right? The European models are models of professional instructors and and trainers that go to school for long periods of time and they not necessarily with the greatest soccer players and hockey players and and handball players they learn just like our teachers learn like we don't do that here in the u.s we we get a guy that a girl that played hockey or didn't who throws gets thrown into a situation and we're expecting them to be child psychologists and understand physiology and understand how children learn and strategy when we really they're not equipped for that just like i wouldn't i wouldn't go teach at my child's elementary school you know the the, the foundations of math i just couldn't do it i mean i could probably get away with it because i could read a book and go day by day by day and teach but i i wouldn't know like the overriding theme of what i'm teaching because i'm not trained in that and you know when i see that and i think even at the at the youth level now what we're looking at is just our obligation as as coaches. Forget about, like, and I agree with obviously the 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 learning aspects of what we want for our youth. But I don't know if a nine year old and a ten year old really cares about how they're going to work in the workplace, right? right? And because a lot of that falls on parenting, right? A lot of this Absolutely. falls on who kind of you know. No matter what I do as a coach, I'm not going to be able to do anything about this kid who's just an just an ass, well, that's the right? Balance, and just so. doesn't want to work with kids. Yeah. But yeah. but in, in in totality of what we do, I'll give you a great. I, I think it's a good example. So we're beating up on this team last game, and now it's six one. The parents are there now. All of a sudden, our kids are little jabs at the other team, little hooting and hollers, laughing on the bench, like the the, the you know and the levity. Now again, we've been getting our butts kicked too, right? We've lost many many games seven to one. 
So now it's my obligation as an adult to take a timeout. I could even see the other coach. I think it was a little pissed off that I took a timeout with like four minutes left in the game. <laughs> We're winning the game. And I'm like, guys, this is how this plays out. We're going to play this team again. You're going to play him next to the next three minutes. The, your dad and mom are up in the stands hooting and hollering. Everyone's having fun right now, right. but they're going to get pissed and somebody's going to take it out on you. And then you're going to have to respond. And then we're going to have to respond. And then we're going to play them again. And they're going to want, you know, it's all about, you know, and, you, and JB, you've seen us at your level, right? In the playoffs, you could be beat. Be, look, look, think about a playoff game when you win game one and the coach now has to think about, well, what's game two going to be? So do I want to, do I want to add fuel to the fire? Or do I want to teach lessons, even if the, you know, we're all, we're all, we all want to win Lee. We're all, and I'm, you know, you're worked up on the bench. Would it be easy for me to say, Oh, let's keep going boys. Right. We haven't scored 10 right. goals all year. Let's get 20, let's get 30. But then it's my obligation to say, well, then what, how am I protecting my players from themselves? If I don't teach these lessons, uh -huh. but at the end of the day, I need, I need mom and dad to be supportive of that too. And understand that, that we're, that we're, that we're teaching these things for the safety of the kids, sportsmanship, future play. I get all that, but it's all, it's our job to say, we did our job. Let's be respectful. The win, the win now, Lee, right? The win now is that we can win with respect and we can respect our teammates. And I think that's lost at the youth level a, a lot. I mean, I've, I've been on, I've been on watching live barn video and, and text messages that get sent to me and, all this stuff and the, 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 and I find myself all the time catching myself that, okay, lower, lower the heat here. Right. And this is just a right. game, but what are we really teaching and how am I, how am I, um, you know, what am I doing to mirror what I want from the kids? You know, I want to bring this up and JB, I'd love your thoughts on this. Cause this is, this is where your experience with teams and especially the military are going to come through is that, and Mike, you brought this up and you're, and you're making a great point that I want to reiterate. You're right. Kids don't care about professional life beyond 18 and nor should they, to be fair. I'm, I've actually, you know, a 12 year old has the right to their 12 year old problems. We say that all the time. That goes for every age, right? All the way up. Okay. I'm, a 90 year old has a right to their nine year old problems. Um, so this is where balance comes in and the removal of ego, right? I hated, hated growing up here. And let me tell you how hard real life is and how I hated it. And here's the thing though. I know that coach actually had good intentions and probably had something good to teach me, but completely had lost the entire room with that statement. As a coach, I try and go, okay, what is, and Mike, you just talked, you just did this. What is the lesson they need to know later on? Remove all ego from it. It's not, well, just you wait, right? It's okay. They need to learn to be respectful. They need to learn how to be in control of their emotions here, obviously, because you are going to play this game again. And also because in real life, you're going to get into situations where if you gloat and do that, you're going to burn bridges. You're going to ruin your life, so forth and so on. You removed ego from it. You kept it in hockey. You kept it in a way they could understand. And, and then here's the other part. You're probably going to have to tell them this message five, six, seven, eight times before some right. of them get it. That's coaching. That's educating, right? Remove the ego and find the balance. The balance is hard. You will lose it. Mike, I am sure. I mean, you're, you're way more experienced than me when it comes to coaching, Mike, but I lose it every once in a while. I get lost in the game, all right? I, I try and snap myself back, and most times I'm able to. So I, what, the reason I'm bringing this up, guys, is that no perfect parents, there's no perfect coaches, all right? You, you got to give yourself permission to kind of phase in and out of that balance, but try and stay as close to balance as possible. JB, I'm sure you have a ton of experience kind of with that mentality. Well, part of it is, is when it goes back to this youth sports and, you know, it's, it's, it's player development, individual development, team development, right. and then standards of standards of excellence. And I think, you know, when a coach says, you know, this is the standards of excellence, Mike, you said it uh, in, in, in the, in the pregame show here, you know, if a, if a kid shows up 10 minutes late, he's late. Yeah. Uh, when I used to coach youth hockey, it was like, your socks will match. That was my, if your socks didn't match, you're out, like off the ice. We issue practice socks for a reason. And all that was, I was trying to teach a little standard of personal accountability. That's it. I wanted to see if that player was like, okay, 10 years old, I better put on matching socks. And then in the locker room, they would say, hey, Lee, make sure your socks match. Okay. Yeah. And so you're, you're trying to teach some of that, right? That, that, that discipline. And then of course it comes, it comes to that development. You know, the, you know, the military works 
because it is multicultural. People come in from all over the, all over the United States, rich, poor, black, white, doesn't matter. And you're thrown in, you know, to a platoon and we march you around and teach you how to shoot. And, and all, of course there's a common goal. You know, you have to save each other's life and, you know, possibly fight the enemy. But when you're building these youth sports teams, and it, it's these, um, it, it, you know, you're, you're trying to continue to build that internal communication of that young person be between each other. And you're exactly right. A lot of times that's going very well, but then we have the aspect of the parents just kind of interjecting into there. Right. Um, I always recommend to, to coaches, they need to continue to communicate to the parents. I know a lot of coaches, they're like, I'm not talking to parents. That's the way it goes. It's my way. And I'm like, mm, today, you better communicate to the parents. Hey, this is where this is my vision. This is what I'm trying to do. The other thing, Mike, I think you brought up, which is very, very important, is I love how the European model is, is a lot of the youth coaches are professional coaches we actually tried to do that in florida and it, and, and, it, and it worked and it worked pretty well for a couple of years we hired young kids out of college that wanted to be um coaches uh they're you know former college players and we be, and they became a uh, uh uh coach uh mentor and educator that's what we called them and then they coached multiple teams and ran all the practices all on the adm model and then all of a sudden they're like Parents are like, what's going on with that? I'm like, well, that's a paid coach. This is his full-time job or her full-time job. That's all they do. We are paying them to coach teams. And they're like, wow. And so then we had a lot of the same standards. So I think that's very important. Now, of course, you know, can't do that a lot because hockey is, you know, an extremely expensive sport. we got to find a way to make it cheaper. I don't know if we will. And we have to try to find a way to open it up to more, more players, more, more diversity. And, and, and then we have to understand that when we're, when we're doing this, you know, parents have to show that patience because if a parent doesn't show that patience, then what happens? The kid's not going to show that parent patience. So the parent has to say, Oh, you had a little rough patch today. Oh, the coach shut you down today. Why was that? Well, you know, I was, uh, you know, kind of chirping on the bench or something else like that. And Mike, I think that's great how you took a timeout and you said, listen, here's how it's going to be. Stop your chirping. You know, we have to understand this. We don't want this to get out of control. OK. And, and again, there, there are times to, you know, pour it on and there are times not to. And I think that's the coach has to have that right, right push pull balance. Right. Lee, did I answer your question? I don't yeah. Know. Oh, and I'll, also, I think JP and Mike, after that game, a quick meeting with the parents to explain to them why you did that. And this is my philosophy. And here's why. And I need you to support that so that when you go home, you reinforce that with your kids. That was the right decision that the coach made because and have a good conversation with your kids and show them that, you know what, instead of talking behind the coach's back, like, why did he did that? My kid could have scored, you know, a hat trick today if he hadn't pulled back. You got to bring the parents in. I, I hate when coaches have the preseason meeting, which is great. And then that's it. You never hear from them again. Right. That line of communication has to stay open. I'm not saying after every game, but you have to period. It's a long hockey season. You need to keep communicating with parents so that you don't lose them along the way and they don't assume certain things about why you're doing it. Be honest with them. Be upfront. Tell them this is our philosophy. If you don't like it, find another team next year. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I listen, and I think my side of this too, I, I nobody communicates more than me. I, I know that. I, I mean, I can't imagine that a coach sends out more information than I do there can't be and I have more issues with today's parents than I've ever had in my life I mean I send I send out why I do this how I do this what I want for your kids how I want your boys to become men how I'd like you to understand that you know when I that, that you me sitting you your player is hurting me it's hurting me more than him I, I'm the one I'm the one that gets affected by this when you don't come to practice for three days that affects me because now I'm teaching the same thing every single week is the same lesson plan. Are you okay, Lee? <laughs> so, so I, I just, uh, you know, because I, I, I don't think I've sent you any nerve. emails. I haven't <laughs> sent, I haven't sent emails to Lee yet, but, but my, my issue is that I don't think it's, I know great coaches and I know what good people do. And I know, like, I know I 
do the right thing. No doubt in my mind, because I want the communication that I would want. Like I want to send out the communication that I want as a, as a very pessimistic dad who wants to better his kid and wants to know what's going on. Like, just tell me what you're doing. Yeah. I do that. Yeah. And, it, and, to, and in today's, you know, I hate to be like, oh, back in the day, but it's just different. It's, it's these kids are overscheduled. They're over asked to do so many things. Mm-hmm. And then they have to choose. Do I come late? Do I come early? I'm telling the coach what I'm going to do. Not I'm going to have a conversation with the coach about what I want to do. Let, let's let's it's jump so into that. Different. Mark, Cause that's kind yeah, of the second that re-evaluation, topic. Re-evaluation, re-evaluation is yeah. really important for parents. You really need to look at, you know, all right, what are you doing with your kids? Are you overscheduling them? How can they commit to so many things? Could you, We're commit? Causing could you as We're an adult causing commit? We're causing yeah. Like, yeah. You know, that, that's the could, could you as an adult handle that schedule? No. You no. Know, and, and that and, and, blows and, my mind. Yeah. Go ahead, JB. And the problem is, is that, you know, it's continuing. Like I, I know, a, I know a 12 year old player is a pretty good player. He already has an advisor and his dad's like, I hired an advisor. I'm like, what for <laughs> your kids 12. <laughs> But so now, so now what happens? So now you have a kid playing at a pretty elite level, doing all these, you know, he's doing these extra uh, drills and training and everything else. And now he's got an advisor overlooking this, charging the dad to say, you know what? Well, maybe we should move him to this team. Right. Or maybe you should, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, the kid's a pretty good player. Yeah, he's, he might have a chance. He's 12. We'll figure it out. When he's 15, then we'll kind of know. But like, l- just let it continue to go. It's He's on a good path. It, it, but you really need to, pay somebody else to do that but that's a problem is there's too much too many things coming yeah. up and those influencers are out there i mean yeah. they'll you get them in your inbox you know your kid has a certain amount of talent you know i can help you because yeah. yeah christy and all of you this is exactly what i was talking about at the beginning of the show okay so the dad goes i have the money i can get this advisor he's going to help me make better decisions right and on the surface level total surface level that person might, that person might actually help you maybe find a path. Follow me here, JB, because because I'm with you on this, okay? Mm-hmm. But, but when that kid's 22 and out of college and has to get a job on their own and there's no advisor, right. he expects an advisor because he's had an advisor his whole life. What is he or she going to do? And that is my exact point. I'm not saying you shouldn't give, give your kid every chance for success, all right? I want to do that too. But you have to ask yourself, am I actually setting them up for success right now? Because I see this all the time, guys. I work with a lot of young people in their 20s. And Mike, this echoes the parenting. And I am being a little critical of parents here. I apologize if I'm I'm insulting any of you. I mean that, but let's have a conversation if I am, all right? But I see this all the time. These kids have no ability to make any critical decisions after college, because they've been given everything their whole life, participation trophies. We are seeing the effects of that full out right now, full out. All right. Or advisors when you're 12 or the answer, or they switch teams 15 times, they get out of, I get out of college and they can't understand. I, I deserve a job. You don't deserve anything. That's not how the country works. You deserve the opportunity. That's about it. If you're not getting the opportunity, that's another conversation. You don't deserve anything after college right? You have the opportunity to work hard, but you've been somewhat coddled your whole life. And now you don't have it. Parents that I just want you to ask yourself the question. I do this too. Is this action going to help them long-term and, or, or help them short-term, but hurt them long-term? That's really the right way to ask it. All right. And I, we are, I'm terrified by what I see Mike, going back to what you said right now. Now, another thing involved in that, Mike, because the way we're talking, it sounds like we're saying, don't ever switch teams. And I actually don't think that's true. All right. We're talking about development. If learning, education, and development by your standard as a parent are not taking place, that's when you should think about it. Not the team hasn't won a game. All right. I, I, I would, if I would, man, I would have been so blessed to have Mike Benelli as a coach growing up. I really mean that. I, I'll be honest with you, looking back right. as an adult, I don't care if we ever won a game because that man is going to teach me so much about the game that I'm going to get better and better and better. All right. And we're so focused on winning and it's just, it's wrong. I, I don't know. How, and Mike, that's what the generation before I think kind of knew. Right. But I, but, but again, this has nothing to do with winning. I want to win more than anyone. I hate losing. I, I literally go and it's sulk in my car. We'll be driving home and I'll bring up something. And Mike will be like, 
you're still bringing that up? I go, yeah, I'm pissed off. Yeah. I said, I don't understand. Like, we got a bunch of Remy's in big city greens here. That's what we got. I don't know. Right, you, yeah. you guys don't have little kids. So, you know, my, or your Lee does, but so my, <laughs> my world of living in this comes down to, you know, the, just the responsibility that the parent and the, and, the, and the coach have. Like, if you're switching teams every year, it's your fault. Yeah. It's you're not, yeah. you're, you're not. And, and the coaches, these coaches that pick a team and five months later want to pick another team. That's BS. That's not coaching. That's, that's recruiting. That's selecting. That's, you know, building one team. If you want to really coach, pick a, pick a group of kids, stick with them for two or three years right. and the parent and educate the parent, the kid, the coach, everyone going together. When you switch from team to team, to team, I, I walk in the games and I see at the 14 U level, Every kid on the team has a different bag. Every kid. Because, and you know why they're not buying a new bag? Because they know they're leaving in five months. Like right now, what is this? Uh, it's, it's December 1st, say, December. It, 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 and we're already talking about, I've got email after email after email. What's going on with tryouts? Where are you coaching next year? <laughs> oh now, I, I don't know if I'm getting where are you coaching next year because I don't want to go there or, <laughs> or I, want to, I want to follow you know, where you're going. But it's the same thing. Like, I, I agree. Like I've had so many parents say to me, we and then you know and JB knows this from his son down in uh, down in Westchester Skating Academy, you know hockey director, beautiful rink, great program. Uh, when I used to run programs at Westchester, we literally have a, a line out the door, 150 kids trying out for a team. 100, I mean, l- l- like really stupid. Like we shouldn't even had it, it was just dumb. We shouldn't have been evaluating kids. Every parent would have been on that line saying, "Mike, we came here for you. We came here for your philosophy. We came here for your coaching staff." Uh, Mr. So-and-so, your son got cut. Oh, you're an idiot. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> you're just, you know, what the hell do you think you know? <laughs> I don't know. Five minutes ago, you, you, you thought this was the best program in the world. Mm-hmm. We didn't select your son. I'm telling you why we didn't select him. And they're just saying, oh, he's got to get better. Like, I hate that crap. What, how, what can my son do? Oh, he's got to get better. What does that mean? What does that so, mean? And, yeah. Let's, let's coach the parent and the kid, but the mm-hmm. coaches have an obligation too. They, they're, you're, if you're we lazy- all do. We all do again, but it's all people. But that's where I think youth sports is blowing up. It's it's not about the let's see that that, that word development, the mind, the body, right. the the, the <clears throat> mental toughness, commitment, you know, being a good teammate, all the attributes we want for our children that we want, like we 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 are paying for, like we're we're paying to have these people do this for us, and we're bypassing it for the for the sake that it just didn't go my way this weekend. Mm-hmm. No, and I think part of that is my my that that that's that's perfect. I think sometimes that you know we we miss the aspect of that personal development. You know, with hockey, there are so many routes to the show. That's the great thing about hockey. There are so many routes. Like you could go, you know, the uh, oh wait, the CHL route, the college route. There are so many routes to the show. And that's what I want to tell parents. Be patient. If your kid's playing, you, you know, if your kid's a might A player right now, it's okay, right? It's like, a, like you know, we talked about 15, 16-year-olds. Then, you know, we have to have a different conversation. But you know, if your kid's eight or nine and playing might a hockey, it's your kid's going to be okay because there are so many great routes. And if you're a good player and you can play people, people are going to, people are going to find you. I mean, is there a reason um, why they don't select Navy seals post pre-puberty? Probably, exactly. Right. Exactly. There's probably a yeah. reason why that like, Oh, that kid, look at that kid. He's the toughest. <laughs> that kid just hit his head on a rock and broke yeah. it in half. That's right. the toughest seven-year-old I've ever yeah. seen. Sign him up, put him on. And he's going to be that's our leader. No, analogy. they don't do it. <laughs> they don't do it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a part of it. People have to just understand there are multiple routes to this show. Yeah. So it's okay. Or the college, wherever else. I mean, Mike, you know, Marco, he took the long route through college and, right. and now, and now he's a coach and that's okay. But so we, we have to show, we have to show a little patience. You know, if parents calls and they ask me, they're like, okay, what team should I pick? I was like, okay, you know, first off, who's the coach? And, 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 and what is, does the coach stand for, right? Does this coach stand for, you know, individual development into team development, into <laughs> standards of excellence? Like that's, that's where you have to find it. Not uh, again, what type of power play, Christy, you said it earlier, what type of power play are you going to run? It's the most ridiculous thing you, you, you heard in your life. You know, I don't know if any of you have watched that uh, King Richard uh, on HBO max, you know, it's about, um, uh, Richard Williams, Serena, and Venus's um, father, and 
it, you know, it was very well done. Um, I think Serena and Venus were both producers of it. Will Smith actually played him and they said it was, you know, relatively accurate. Uh, the issue I think with that movie is, you know, he, he's borderline uh, crazy and genius. And I think now parents are going to watch that and say, well, this is what I'm going to do for my kid. Well, obviously he had, you know, Venus Williams and Serena Williams who were uber talented. Let's start there. Uber talented in an individual sport. Okay. Um, and so he kind of knew the path, but there were things that he was doing. You know, he was just basically telling the coach, Hey, no, my kid's not playing juniors anymore. Um, Venus was 63 and oh in juniors and he pulled her out. She didn't play another match for two and a half years. And, but my point is, is I think parents are going to watch that and say, okay, now I'm going to start this individual development. I'm going to, yeah. okay, my kid's ready. I'm going to take my kid here, or I'm going to keep trying out, or I'm going to pay the money. And I think we have to understand of what is that development? What does that development look like? We all want our kids to succeed. We all want our kids to, you know, play in college or play in the show or wherever. It's great. But what does that development have a little patience in the process? You know, Turn it back to you. I also want to say this real quick, JB. Yeah, so one, one thing you're making is really short on time now is that talent is an obvious part of the formula, all right? But the people who have it, have it. I'm not talking about anybody's kid right now, just in general. Talent's a major part right. of the formula. But at the top levels, speaking about Serena and Venus, what kind of people are they beyond the athletics? They're good people. Serena 100%. and Venus are good human beings. 100%. That was also taught to them. And I, I think that's just so important. You know, what we, JB and I, we, and, and every, actually, this, this, this podcast, we interview a lot of NHL athletes. They're good people. <laughs> All right. They're good people. They have a gift and talent and they worked their butts off. I had private instructors my whole development. All right. Because I started late. Every one of them was not about how I need to play on the team. It was individual skill development. And I mm -hmm. wanted it, people. I wanted to learn. All right. That was another key part of it. And I didn't go to the NHL. All right? I didn't even get close, really. All right. But I'm so thankful for those mentors of hard work and teaching that you, you can't go from A to Z. You got to go slowly and develop a skill. You got to be part of your team. I can't tell you what you should do. I need to talk to your coach. Let's have a discussion. Those are the types of conversations we're not really having. All right. And, and again, Serena's and, and, and so Serena's, I just put them together. Venus and Serena are good human beings above all. Right. And I, that's the value there. All right. We've seen athletes that nobody can stand. You feel bad. They have talent. Listen, we have one minute left. I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to have to do a part two of this, JB. You're, you're so awesome at this. Um, yes. Any final thoughts? Guys, we, have, we have basically time. for. I'm thoughts. honored to be here. Yeah. Well, we're honored to have. So let's go across Mike real quick. Final thoughts. Yeah. Hey. 20 seconds. <laughs> Just listen. To, listen, I, bottom line is perspective is everything, but I think listening to all these podcasts and some, most of the stuff that I'm learning is every day evolving because of the conversations and the education I try to do to, for myself. So I don't claim to know everything, but I try to get everything from all these different perspectives. And, and I don't know, just being on JB is a, you know, a great honor, but it's also a great educational experience. I think we got to do more of this. Right. Putting a little pressure on our kids. I mean, there's nothing new to that. It's been going on forever. And some of it is a good thing, but just uh, put it in perspective. Jimmy, be a good supportive parent. Yeah, no, I just think that, you know, uh, leadership and accountability and, and personal conduct, you know, that's the importance that we continue to, you know, work it together. And if we do that on the right path, then again, the sport isn't the success, it's the vehicle to success. I love it, JB. And look, that's going to do it for this episode. Again, we want you to get involved in this one, friends. We're just four people. Again, we're experts in our own right, but the truth is this has to be a community based thing. It has to be a conversation. So you can email us at team at our kids play hockey.com or just comment wherever you see these videos. But again, short on time, I'm going to end this one quick. This has been our kids play hockey. Check us out. Our kids play hockey.com. JB Spizo, check him out. Absolute mentor, leader, culture expert. You need to be listening to this guy on a daily basis, as well as Mike Vanilli and Christy Cashota Burns. For them, I'm Lee. We'll see you next time on our kids play hockey. Have a great day. Everybody.